to be in front of you. Uh, it's really nice to speak to this amount of people. It doesn't happen often to me in Europe. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, the co-authors of this job, Sorrenti, Elena Baldi, Graciela Marcolini, and Maurizio Quartieri, that are colleagues of mine in, in my department. Uh, the objective of the fertilization management of orchard is, of course, to increase the profit. We want to make profit out of our job. And to have profit, we have to uh, achieve some goals, like to have high quality and high yield. We don't want to lose any of the input. We don't want to supply too much nutrients. And we don't want to have deficiency. All this must take in consideration that the environment is our first issue. All we do is to be in the preservation of the environment. This is particularly important. All the money that comes to the university for research has as first objectives the environment. The environment. Uh, these are two situations that must be avoided. Too much nitrogen, high level of nitrogen, high intensity should grow. This is very uh, inopportune for trees. The quality of the fruits is poor because no radiation for the skin color. At the same time, pests and disease are very difficult to manage in this situation. This is another situation that we want to avoid, deficiency. Okay? Deficiency decreases the uh, quality and the yield. You see here deficiency in apple. No should grow. No renewal of the vegetation. So poor quality the next, the following years. Level of nitrogen delay the abscission of leaves. While where we don't have nitrogen application, the leaves fall early in the season. This has some involvement in carbon assimilation and also a delay in harvest. Something that we have to keep in mind when we manage nitrogen in orchard. You see, no application of nitrogen, very early leaf drops in the system. Um, a few key points that are very important is that the application rate must uh, uh, meet exactly the requirement of the trees. This is very important, and I can tell you that nobody followed this rule. Usually the application of nutrients in orchard are made on something that is, you know, suggested. But we have to keep in mind that the requirement of the trees are very, very important. Another important situation is the timing of application of nutrients. Of course, working with temperate fruit trees, there are some times where the nutrients are required and other times where the nutrients are not required. This to maximize the efficiency of fertilizer. So mainly we have to answer two questions. Two questions. The amount of nutrients and the time of application. This is the two questions that we have to answer when we approach fertilizer management of fruit tree. This depends on the environment, this depends on the management of the orchard, so the species that we choose, the rootstocks, the irrigation management, the soil management. <coughs> I divided, this is an old slide, but this is very important, the nutrients may be divided.
divided in two types, the leachable and not leachable. Leachable in a loamy to clay loamy soil is only nitrogen. All the other nutrients are held by the soil. In sandy soil, like most of the Brazilian soil that I have visited in the south part of Rio Grande do Sul, are sandy soil. So in this situation, all the nutrients are leachable. So we might consider the time where roots uptake these nutrients. Otherwise, this nutrient will be lost into the groundwater, into the environment. Nitrogen is a really mobile nutrient, particularly as a nitrate form, and the leaching depends mainly from the rainfall. Sugar. The higher is the precipitation intensity, the higher is the amount of nutrient that is leached to the groundwater. So the most important variable is the rain. So the months that are the most humid are also the months where the loss of nitrogen is more intense. This is something that we have to consider. Also the form of nutrient is really important. This is an organic source of nitrogen. This is compost. This is urea, a mineral source of nutrient nitrogen. So eight days after the application, even low rate of application, make available nitrogen if it is as a urea. Okay? But if we apply organic material, we don't have any nitrogen available, even if the amount is very high, 1,000 parts per million. This is the same three months later, 94 days. Still, the organic material didn't provide any nitrogen for root uptake. This is another important issue. It is one of the mistakes the organic growers make usually. They apply nitrogen as organic nitrogen and they pretend to have nitrogen availability for trees. But this doesn't happen and the yield decreases. This is a very basic consideration, very simple one, that everybody, even outside of this research community, should uh, consider. So, how can we determine the rate of application? We can make a balance of the nutrients. This is an example of nitrogen, but this balance can be made for every single nutrient. Okay? So the sources are mainly the fertilization that we apply, but also we have some uh, nutrients from the precipitation and from the irrigation water. In Europe, for example, this value is about 30 to 40 kilos of nitrogen per year per acre due to the pollution. We have some storage in the soil that are mainly from microbial community and organic material. What are the sink? The sink are mainly the plants that uptake the nutrients and the loss. If we are good growers, we should make this equal to zero. Nada, nothing, okay? This is not really easy. However, we have to do our best to decrease it. So let's check what is the plant seed. And in particular, we have to consider that some of the nutrient partitioned to leaves, to pruning wood, actually return into the orchard. They are not taken away. They stay in the orchard. Other part, like fruits and uh, uh, skeleton are exactly removed completely by our culture. So, to understand what is the amount of the nutrient uptaken by the tree, what we have to do is to analyze the tree. So we remove a tree and we analyze the single uh, part of the tree. 
This is uh, an experiment I think also Gustavo has participated in this experiment. And it showed that in an apple orchard, after six years, the amount of nitrogen removed by soil was 360 kilos per hectare. Okay? And this is the different repartition. The skeleton, 110 more or less, fruits, 9 kilos. Um, pruning wood, 75 kilos. Leaves, 85 kilos. So, these two parts actually return into the ground uh, with the recycling. These two parts, fruits and skeleton, are removed. Okay. In the detail, in the sixth year, so it was a year of uh, production of the orchard, the, um, oh, sorry, the amount of wood then removed was uh, of, uh, nitrogen of 60 kilos. Okay. 60 kilos per hectare is the requirement of nitrogen for an hectare of apple in the northern part of Italy. Okay? This is our first question. 60 kilos for this situation. Okay? And the repartition was, as he had indicated, 21 kilos for fruit, etc., etc. This can be made for all the nutrients. And in fact, here we have the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium in the sixth year. Okay? And you see that different nutrients are partitioned in a different way in the different organs. Like nitrogen and phosphorus are mainly in the trunk and the scaffold and in fruits, 25%, 28% of this amount of time in fruits. Other nutrients like, for example, potassium are mainly partitioned to the fruits. So 40%, almost half of the potassium, high amount because it's 435 kilos in six years, goes to the fruits. Other nutrients like calcium and magnesium goes to the leaves, so they will return to the soil. Okay, so these are information that can, you know, give us some information on how and when apply. Of course, leaves, you see, fall down into the soil and will make available the nutrients later. We don't know when, because this is organic material. I know that Brunetto has made some study to explain when these nutrients are available, but they are still in our ecosystem. This is for peach. Uh, our investigation showed that nitrogen, for example, is removed in 2011 according to the application rate. So the higher is the application rate, this is compost at 10 tons per hectare per year, the higher the amount of nitrogen that is removed. Remember that peach has twice the requirement of apple. Apple was 60 kilos per hectare. Peach is 130 kilos per hectare. So different, okay? different crop, different requirements. Okay. And, um, Another important thing is the carbon. Carbon that is removed by the orchard mm. is 4.5 to 5.6 tons per hectare. So this is important if we want to check, maybe we are interested in the uh, life carbon assessment. So this is another story. Um, so for all the uh, crops, for all the species from kiwi to cherries to grape, we have uh, in literature the amount of nutrients that are removed. This is nitrogen, look, uh, persimmon is the uh, highest in demand of nitrogen, 150, 170 kilos, while apple is just 40 to 90 kilos. We have to make difference when we approach different orchard systems. And the nutrient also 
you see it is different in terms of phosphorus, it's very low amount required, potassium is quite high, calcium is the highest ever. And I know that your soil often are suffer because of calcium deficiency. We don't have this problem, we have lots of calcium in our soil, that's good. We don't give too much importance to this. So, but when is the time of fertilization? Time of fertilization depends, of course, on the season and the phenological stage. But we have three different examples, great late harvest species, peach, early uh, harvest species, and plum, medium uh, harvest species, all have a very low amount of nitrogen required before bloom. 25% in grape, just 10% when we speak about peach, 15% in plum. The highest amount of nutrient is required from bloom to harvest. 50% is for grape, 65% for peach, 60%. And just a quarter of the requirement after harvest, late in the season. So even without fruit, the plants still absorb nitrogen during the season. This low amount before bloom is because most of the vegetative growth at the beginning is based on the storage nitrogen. The nitrogen that has been stored there in the previous uh, season. And this is reflected also by the efficiency of the nitrogen utilization. The use of nitrogen is just 4.2% at um, bulb burst. At the very beginning of the season, only 4 kilo out of 100, Four kilos out of one another are taken by the trees. This is a uh, wall uh, that has some development in Italy uh, currently. When we have the, the beginning of flowering, this is uh, male flowers, we have 20% of uh, a peak of nitrogen in seven days. But if we go later after the harvest, that in Italy is the month of September, so at the end of the summer, this uh, uh, use of nitrogen is 30 or 35 percent. So it means that in seven days, 35 percent of the nitrogen applied is taken up. If we consider the amount taken up after one year, this amount will never be higher than 70 percent. So part of this nitrogen will remain in the system, even if the situation where we're controlled, we use a pot, we control the water that we put in, so everything was under uh, control. So uh, the efficiency of nitrogen increased with the time. Okay. So the early application has a very low efficiency, very low possibility to be uptaken by oil. At the beginning of the season, as I told you, most of the activity is made on the reservation of nitrogen. This is because the leaves during the season has a lot of nitrogen until harvest. This is apple, a mutsu variety. Then from harvest to leaf fall in winter, the leaves remobilize nitrogen. And when they fall down, they have just a small amount of nitrogen. All this nitrogen is about 10 milligrams of nitrogen each leaf. It remobilized to the trunk and to the roots, available for the following spring. So what we have to do now to check the fertility of our soil? The fertility of our soil can be done easily by measuring the available nitrogen. If we want to consider and focus on nitrogen, of course nitrogen is the only leachable nutrient in my soil in Italy, so I am focusing on nitrogen. So we might measure it from the soil or from the water that we collect from the soil by soil suction. So we have to consider the space where the roots develop and the uh, depth of the developing of roots 
And we have to consider the trend of nitrates. This is some data from our iron. And ammonium nitrogen. These are the two available form of nitrogen. The only one that the woods can take up. So these are the situations that we consider optimal for uh, Orchard from 5 to 20 parts per million of mineral nitrogen. Okay, so if the nitrogen available, mineral nitrogen made by nitrate and ammonium, lies into this uh, amount, we are okay. If this is lower, we have to apply nitrogen. If it is too high, we have to pay attention and to eventually apply organic material with a high carbon to nitrogen ratio to sequestrate the nitrogen that is in high amount. This is some situation of Italy, different uh, orchard, different situation of nitrogen in the soil, and this in rather the application that we suggested to reach 56 kilos that are the optimal level for this stage. You see, they are very close to each other. Some of them need nitrogen application, some other have enough nitrogen to stand by themselves without any nitrogen application. So it's very important to evaluate the <coughs> nitrogen available in the soil. We might consider also the uh, concentration of nutrients in the plants, tissues, and particularly in leaves. But to do this, we have to keep in mind that the response of the leaves, it's linear, or at least it's very well observed, when the nutrients into the soils are below the optimal level. So in this situation, even a small amount of nutrient applied can give a good response in leaves. But if we are in this area here, we don't have too much answer. This is the situation where lots of Italian soil so it's difficult to predict a situation where when the nutrients are still available in the soil. In fact, this is the situation that is also observed experimentally. These are the mineral nitrogen, see around 20. The concentration of the leaves at 2.1 that is optimal for a pair in this situation. So, if we are above this situation, we don't have too much answer, too much response in terms of nutrient concentration because we are already at the optimal level. And also we have to consider that uh, increasing the concentration of nutrient in the soil will increase the uh, shoot growth while quality and yield will not increase too much. So it depends what is our goal in terms of uh, final result. So let's go fast to some uh, uh, consideration. Among the factors that in, um, make the uh, change in leaf concentration are the varieties and the rootstocks. You see two different varieties, two different response in terms of mineral nutrition. Three different rootstocks three different response. Those of the nutrients, you know, behave different. Nitrogen, for example, has higher concentration with dwarf, uh, dwarf rootstocks, while potassium has a higher concentration with vigorous rootstocks. It's important also the way we consider the concentration of nutrient in leaves. Sometimes, this is the example of iron, the concentration will not work very well. Chlorophyll, that is a symptom of iron deficiency, does not respond to leaf concentration. It will respond if iron is considered in terms of uh, specific leaf weight or as a content of iron per leaf, microgram per leaf. Okay? This because when the chlorophyll decreases, decreases also the weight of the leaves. The leaves become thinner, so the dry matter in the leaves decreases and the concentration is 
series will decrease the volume where the uh, nutrients is reported. Is and this is a very easily detectable here. You see, we apply nitrogen, total nitrogen in leaves increase up to this level. Then it doesn't increase. So the SPA, that is this ins instrument, will detect easily this variation, but then will not detect any other variation. In this area here, there is no increase in nutrient, there is no increase in chlorophyll. So uh, leaf analysis, leaf analysis is important. Usually we make uh, summer leaf analysis, but summer may maybe is too late for detecting the deficiency, so we might consider to make an early leaf analysis in order to predict some uh, deficiency that we have. And let's see here some trend of some nutrient. Here are some data from the area where uh, I am from. You see that nitrogen early at least fetal drop is very high, then decrease over the summer. Other nutrients like calcium will have the opposite trend, will increase from leaf, uh, from flower petal drop to summer. Some nutrients in here is, uh, are uh, dif difficult to analyze, like manganese, for example. We have seven different labs, and five of them predict, give a result very uh, comparable to each other, but two of them give a result that are very different of concentration. The same for boron. Boron is very difficult to analyze. In fact, the deviation, standard deviation for all the labs that we have tested is very high. So sometimes it's not really, you know, uh, reliable. And uh, another situation that we can uh, consider is analyze the flower. For example, in peach, there is an early flowering, and this can give us a possibility to analyze for some nutrients like calcium, it works well. Calcium in flower can be very well correlated to the calcium in leaves later in the season. Also for manganese, but for example, for iron, this doesn't work. Iron was well related to the previous year leaf concentration. So iron looks like the result of what was the previous season. As I told you, iron chlorosis is an important problem. You see these leaves with intensive, massive iron chlorosis symptoms. The leaves is thicker, so the concentration of iron will not change. The same concentration even if this leaf is going to die. And uh, we try with Gianni to spray later in the season iron to have at the at beginning of the season iron available for we burn a little bit of leaves, but we are at the end of the season, so we didn't care too much about it. And what happened is that the application of iron in leaves increased, actually, the iron in leaves. But most of this iron fell down with the leaves. Okay? So we increased the concentration 10 or more times, but all this iron went down with the leaves. But look, the increase of concentration from one week after the application to the end of the season. We have an increase, even in control, that was not sprayed. This is because most of the nitrogen of the leaves went out, the leaf dry matter decreased, and the are increasing its concentration. So when we consider the concentration in the leaves, we have to be careful sometimes, you know, it's not exactly what we expect. What happened later in flowering in the following season, we had in the buds an increase in iron. We don't have in flower. We had in leaves right after the uh, burst of the buds, but we don't have in sun. But what, look, the uh, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll at fruit set increase, increase also in sun. So we didn't have a remobilization of iron, an intensive, we didn't detect, but probably we had enough iron mobilized to improve the situation in the summer. 
In fact, we had a correlation, a good correlation between iron in bats and the chlorophyll in uh, the leaves. So, uh, fastly go to the conclusion, and uh, I will can discuss about this in the discussion, like for example, the accumulation of potassium in food. Look at the accumulation of potassium. When would you expect potassium requirement? Uh, when the accumulation in fruit is the highest, so late in the summer, when we have potassium deficiency in most of the leaves in grain, for example. Calcium is a, uh, another story, okay? If you are interested, we can spend some time talking about calcium, calcium uptake. Also magnesium concentration in um, the fruit has the same trend, also magnesium can have the same problem of potassium. This is particularly a symptom of magnesium and manganese deficiency in uh, South Low Italy. Manganese deficiency that happens when we apply iron, because of the chelates, you know, make unavailable manganese, so we cure iron deficiency, we uh, make manganese Boron also is very important, situation of boron deficiency. Boron is related in some way to the uh, rot in fruit. I didn't know this personally, I didn't experience that, but this is a great uh, word. In control, we have 53% of fruit, 56% of fruit affected by rot, but if we apply boron, we decrease the uh, incidence of uh, rot. So in conclusion, we have to say that the application of uh, nutrients must be done on the availability of our soil, so soil analysis, fast soil analysis, ready, prompt soil analysis, uh, available for every growers immediately, and the uh, requirement of trees, that we know because the literature we have this. Uh, trees has a very small requirement of nutrients, it's not like a crop just a few amount of nutrients is uh, sufficient. Uh, uh, foliar analysis is, can be used, but it's not the only one tool that we have to use when we sell, when we plan a fertilization management, because it might be a problem even to identify the correct uh, optimum range. Uh, it's important to have foliar analysis for each eye. So you should have here the leaf analysis for your crop, not to take leaf analysis made in Italy or made in UK or made in the United States. The laboratory also is very important. We should and you might have to uh, set protocols to follow toward the laboratory because we should be able to compare the single result and, and to be sure that this is Thank you for your attention and just to do a slice that Gianni wanted to introduce and I hope this will be a good luck for us. Maybe we can meet together again on July 13 at the Maracanã Stadium. Thank you.